so to i hope all of you are able to see whatever the link i have shared to you people please just go with us and follow as per the thing we can do here so here first we will be introduced with the python programming now the just all i think the 70% people are knowing the python so th those are the 30% people are here for those i'm giving you the flavor of the python i think out of which in our engineering what are the things we learn out of that i think that python is the easiest language to learn and it is very flexible and it is very flexible as well as it is very easy to learn also so here we are going with the google colab platform so here we don't need any installations for the uh, system or to work with this so here we are using the google colab jupyter notebook in the jupyter notebook we can have the two different type of the cells one is the code cell another is the text cell so what are the things i have written in the theory format it is in the text cell text and what are the code i have written which is in a code cell so those are the code cells are here you can see the play button is here so just by clicking the play button the cell will be run if it is having no error it will give the output so like this so here this uh, google uh, colab notebook is already a self explanatory and you can use after what also those are having the starting with the python so whenever we want to execute the cell we are having a different just like you can go with the run time also there we can have in the insert the code cell text cell likewise options are there so meanwhile i will not give you any more focus to add the cells so like this because everything is added in the google colab notebook so first we can start with the python basics so in the python basics just i will start with the first with the print statement so just like already we have used in c and c++ we are using in c as a printf and c++ as a c out similarly in the python we are having the print function is inbuilt so to execute the print function we don't require to add any libraries here because we are working with the python basics so automatically it will take care of it so what are the function is a print is a function in circular bracket whatever the things we return inside the double quote it will be print as it is as the output just click on the play button and you will see the output and that is whatever the message is there link is not working let me try i think link is working let me try it's working fine thank you yeah it's working it's working so when you click on the play button you will get the message hello artificial intelligence whatever the message we put it in the double quote similarly we can use the print statement whatever we put in a single quote also either for the print function we can put the text inside the double quote or single quote but in some cases we require to uh, give the output as a apostrophe or we have to give some specialized to uh, double quote we need at the output so how we can do that here my message in a single quote now whenever i will to use as apostrophe just i used a backward slash so here when you print the statement you will get the apostrophe here at the output why we have to use the backward slash here because when we put in in the print statement is a backward slash so whatever is the character next to the backward slash will be omitting from the uh, uh, as a, a syntax of that statement just it will be print the that character after the backward slash that's why we get the apostrophe 
Similarly, in the second print statement, whenever we use the double quote, because what we understand up till now, inside the print statement, whatever we put either in a double quote or single quote, we'll get the output as it is. But we require to print the as a double quote, so we have to use the backwards line. So after the backward slash, whatever the single character will be there, it will be displayed as it is, like this. Just this is as simple as a print statement. Now, similarly, we can go accept the input from the user. So another built-in functions with the Python as an input. Now, in bracket, that is a message is there, so it will be print as it is. Now it will be hold to accept the input from the user. Until and unless you will not provide the value for that variable, it will not move forward. Just like here, name is equals to input in circular bracket, what is your name? So when, unless and until we will not provide the name, the next statement will not go for the execution, just like. When I run this statement, it will wait for my input. So what is your name? No. My name is Vikas. So then it will be statement will be print welcome plus whatever is my name to the FDP. Now again, I'm having the second statement again as an input. Where are you from? So again, it will be waiting for your input. Unless and until you not provide the input, it will not go for the execution for the next statement. When I put it here, so it will come to the next statement. And when I will complete my execution, so you will get the correct syntax here. That is a correct tick mark will be here, like this. Now, again, in our C, C++, we require to declare the variable with its data type, but in Python, we don't require any declaration before the variable with this data type. Just like in the Python, I declare A equals to 20, and just I want to print the A. So just it will be printing the variable A. So it's very simple. Whenever we require the variable, just we put it here, and whatever, and we can use it. Second thing with the Python is that Python is case sensitive. So single A and capital A will be treated as a different thing. Suppose if I type it here as a capital A, it will give the error. Okay, so here it will not give the error because already I have run something with the A. Suppose I type as a here capital A. So it will give the message name A is not defined. Here is my suppose A is here. So this small a and capital A will be treated as a different. Now, see, now again, the next cell is forever string variable is there. Suppose I'm I'm having the variable three, which we welcome it to the program. Now with the single quote. Now I want to count how many strings or the characters in this my variable. I want to use print statement as a print function. Then inside the function, I'm using the len that is a length. For which variable I want to calculate the length, I have to provide that variable name here. So what is happening here? So inside the one function I'm using, another function is also there. So with the single line, I will get the output. So here total 32 characters are there and that will be printed here. So print function, if we print directly the variable three, so what you will get? So you will you will get the same message again. So whatever is the value associated with the variable three. But when we use print, 
length in bracket variable three, it will be count the number of character associated with var three. That is the length. That is a thirty-two. Now, in a single line. We can declare the n uh, different data types of the variables also there. Here we can see that a comma b comma c. Here we are declaring the three variables with three different values: one, two. Here one and two both are integer values, and third is a machine learning that is a string value. Here you can declare these two as float, and now we can print a b c. So here there is a data type. Is not constant with the Python means you can declare multiple data types at a time. So this flexibility we can get it with the Python. Now n number of variable we are assigning the same value, so we can go it here a1, a2, a3, and a4 all with the assign with the ten value. Now we can print the a2 only, so we will get the message of the value of the a2 here. Now in initial stage, when we're learning with the C, we are having the swapping of the variable, uh, swapping two variables program. It's having like a like, uh, number of eight to 10 lines program is there, including libraries like those. But in Python, it is very easy. Here I'm having value one with 90 and value two with the 34. I printed here. Now I want to swap the variable here, value one comma value two. And if I put it after the equal to sign, just value two first and value one last. So automatically swap the variable. It is very easy. I want to swap the variable. Here my value one and value two, I printed here 90 and 32 at the initial. Now I want to swap the variable value. What I did, I put value two at first comma value one. So what will happen? Value two is associated with value one and value one is associated with value two. So in one line, you have swap the variable. Just a single line to swap the variable. Again, we can having Boolean data types also. This. Not true, true, false, variable, variable one, variable two. Now I'm printing those values. String with, because I want to display it string characteristics. So with the print statement, I put it here, string. When I print it, I will execute this cell. So the statement is as it is. So what is the value is associated with variable one? Not true means it is false. It is false. So it is true, true, and false, false. If I put it here as a not false, so it will get as a true. See as a change. Next, if we want to compare the two variables, or if we are to do the comparison, again, less than, greater than, uh, equals to, these are the comparison variable is also available in Python. So here I am having in another cell, x is my 20, print if s x is greater than two. And second statement, print x equals to equals to two. So this statement will be my printed. So what it will give you? It will give you which print print statement is it is not printing the value, it printing the Boolean data types. Means if this statement is true or false, it will return the values. If it is not written in numerical value, it will return in the Boolean values of the statement. So the Python is giving very flexibility to us how we can declare if you see that up till now what are the things we have used we have not declared a single library in, in that uh, program just we have to write the statement and execute it that's it so automatically the care taken by the uh, tool here so what it indicates now the conditional statements are there if else then while for loop what are the different statements or the loop statements are there how we can use it. 
Now, here, if, LC, else statements are there. So we know that if with the condition, so if this my condition or my expression is true, execute this statement. So first is my if and the else. If my if condition is not true, it will go to the else. So else does not have any condition. It directly, if if condition is not true, it will be directly go to the else statement. And what are the statements are here? It will be execute. See here if a is equals to 23, here I put or I assign the value to the a as a 23. Now if a equals to equals to 23, means if this condition is true, then it will be print the I'm in the if block. If this condition is not true, I'm in the else block. So here Already I have given the value a as a 23. So this condition is true. So it will print the a block. If I change the value of a from 23 to 2, you see. So now this condition will not be true because a is not equal to 23. So it will be print the else block statement. I hope you're following with me. Okay, fine. Now, so another condition here we're writing number of condition statements or that is we're writing the two if statements are here. So in another cell, write it here. That is number is equals to minus nine. If my number is greater than zero, print it is a positive number. Else if, if my number is equals to equals to zero, print zero. Else print as a negative number. Now already I have provided here number with minus nine. So I know that it should print the negative number. So what will happen here my number is not greater than zero. So it will be coming from this if to here. Here again, it will check the condition. If here my number is equals to equals to zero, not. So again, it will coming from this if, and it will go for the else. So for the else, there is no condition, and it will print as a negative number. So I'll get the output as a negative number. Instead of the minus nine, if I put as a positive nine, so what I will get here, my number is greater than zero. So this statement should be printed. So here you will get positive numbers. Here. So next is loop. Here we can use for loop statements here. Here I declare numbers with one dimensional array with the values 1, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. I want to add all these numbers. So initially I put sum equals to zero. No, I am using for loop because I want to go for additions with each and every number, consecutive number, and then proceed. So the syntax is a for. This number, here if you can carefully see, here is a numbers, yes is here. This number is another variable for in means for number in numbers means number is a variable of array numbers it will be accessing to the numbers so sum equals to sum plus number so initially i have to clear sum as a zero then what will be the first value of the number it is a one now once it's added zero plus one then this for loop go for the incrementing then it will be add with another number 10 likewise so in this for loop here we are not provided so from where it has to start where it has to end and uh, how much time it's to be go for incrementing so automatically the care is taken it will be start from the zero indexing number and it is incremented by one and so on up to the last so here we don't provide any initial value final value and increment value like we provided in c just we play it here. 
so we will get the answer is 151 now here we printed the value only once why because this print statement is not belong to the for loop how it is because python is intent sensitive so that is what means by intent so inside the loop how many statements are there that will be defined with the on the basis of the intent how it is suppose for loop if i put this up at the back now what you will get you will get the error that is expected and indent block means what when you are providing the for loop so at least one statement should be inside this at least one more than one okay if not at least one should be there otherwise it will give the error because for whom or for what you are written the for loop you have not put it in a statement here so means it is a wasting of for loop if you don't don't want to do any work inside the for so for that just we have to put the tab so atom, just by putting the tab it will be take these statements comes under the for loop in c and c plus plus what we use we use a, we are using the curly brackets similarly this print statement is out of the for loop if you put inside the for loop what will happen it will get in the printing statement so many times how many times it will do the addition it will print the sum initially it is sum zero plus number is my one so zero plus one one sum will be stored then it will come to the next again the follow it will take the another number 10 10 plus 1 11 another number 20 like this then up to the last is 150 so intent is very very important now next the loop statement now if you want to provide the start end and increment in the range so what we require so for r and now we have to use the keyword as a range when you want to provide the range starting value ending value and with how many times it should start for the increment so here we have to provide the range also so here i put it a equals to 20 for i in a range so it will start with the one end value with the 20 and increment with the five so what will happen it will be printing the i so initially it start with the one one plus five six six plus five eleven eleven plus five sixteen it will be printing the i because here we put the print i so four times we are getting the printing statement because starting value is one ending value is 20 and our increment value is five so we have to move with five steps how it is possible because of the range if you want to go for each and every value so there is no need to provide the range like this numbers in number number in numbers so it will take each and every value See the difference between these two for loop. Here for, this is a variable in numbers. So we're accessing from numbers, each and every element. If you provide the range, as a, this is range is another function in the Python. So it will have a initial value, final value, and the increment value. So it's depend on your application, which type of for loop you want to use it. Next is while loop. Here I started another value variable with the value with four. While value is less than 10, print value and then increment. Here you can see that both statements are intended with while loop. So what will happen? Value is less than 10. So first value equals to four. Come to the while statement. If my value is less than 10, it will print the value then after that value plus means value is added with one value so value is incremented by one then again 
go to the value uh, while statement again this condition is true print this statement like this so here you can get the value 45678 once the value of value variable is 10 it will come out of the value so for every loop in syntax if you see that keyword is a while here is a condition statement and then colon so colon indicates that my condition is over so whatever is my condition this much is condition after the colon what are the intended statements are coming here if you forget to put the colon you will get the error because your condition is not completed so whenever you are using conditional statements the keyword either a for or while then condition is there and then colon operator you can see in the for the same is the case here for i in which again the colon is here so colon indicates what is the condition for the for loop so this will be treated as a condition for the for loop No, this is a simple exercise there. You can write or you can print the data 5649 by using the while loop in the reverse order. We can try your work. So how we can add the code? Just come in between this two cells. This is my code cell and the text cell. If you come in between, if you click on the code, new code cell will be added. If you want to delete, just delete it. If you want to add the text cell, just click on the text, the text cell will be added. Next is the string. How we can go with the string? Here in the string, we're having the variable one as a, a string character as a testing variable two as I am running, variable three is hello. Now, here I'm printing my string variable. Now, I'm printing the variable one from how much character or how much character I want to print? Zero colon three, means what? This one, so indexing starts from the zero, zero, one, two, and three but last will be excluded just you can run the cell and you can see the output so here i'm printing variable one zero colon three so zero colon three means i want to start from the zero and up to the three just before the three so i can exclude the last range so which i want to print variable one zero three so you can see t is my zero indexing e is one and s is two this t is at third so this will not be printed you can see 0 1 and 2 the final value that is whatever the final range of your value that is last value will be excluded similarly for the variable 2 1 is to 16 so 1 is to 16 so i is at your 0 so it is not going to print it here and space is another character am space and r up to this you are getting 0 to oh, sorry 1 to 5 now third statement is here print variable 3 into 4 what it indicates you are having the variable 3 and you are multiply 4 times means you want to print variable 3 4 times so what is my value of variable 3 is hello with exponential so you can see that it is printed four times. Is it clear? Now, like our C and C++ statement, we can formatting the output statement like this. My name is, now percentage S is again for the string and my height is percentage D is my integer value. Colon. Now here I am using percentage operator. Whatever the my value for those. For first S is a Vikas and for percentage D is 166. Like this. 
so here you can see that instead of the percentage s it will take the value of we cast it here and the percentage d it is another value it is 166 Uh, yes, ma'am. Can we ask uh, the participants uh, uh, a couple of questions if they would like to ask yeah, or uh, anything? Or maybe they are asking you and I'm not able to see them. So participants, please feel free because this is more like a session where we would like to have more interaction with you as uh, Vikas ji has already told in the beginning that let us make this in, uh, session more interactive. So just in case you are having any difficulties, doubts, you are lagging behind, please let us know. Uh, if you are getting it, uh, if you are able to do things, please let us know. And uh, so you please take maximum benefit of the availability presence of Professor Vikas. Thank you. Because uh, we have, we are in the middle of the session. So no that was the reason I thought uh, we can give a little break and ask the participants. Professor Vikas, please. Yeah, yeah. some are asking about the that is floating point just you can declare the variable just like i have just add it here or before it i will add one cell just for your exercise just code i'm adding as a code as one cell if i put a equals to 2.4 uh you're you're muted or what Professor Vikas? No, my voice. Already unmuted, madam. Um, Are you getting my voice? Minute. Are you getting my voice? Participants, can you hear him? Both are audible. Okay, then it's all right. No, there is no need to put a semicolon in the Python because all the statements are executed. There is no need to put the semicolon in Python. Uh, when we are asking that because we change the order, it will not work because percentage S stands for string and percentage D stands for the uh, integer number. So when we change the order, it will not work. So some are asking about the floating point. Here I'm declaring A as a 2.4 and then print A. It will be print the value of A as a 2.4. There is a no uh, binding with the data types when we are handling with the Python. What are the things you are applying on the integers or the string? Same thing is applicable on the floating variable also. There is that is not the issue. Okay. So that command I'm explaining again. That is with the string with the Python. Here I'm having variable one equals to testing. Means what is the variable one having the value, having the character as a testing, variable two with I am running, and variable three with hello. Now, when I want to go with the print the statement, so variable one in uh, zero is to three. What it indicates, I want to print the value of variable one, which starts from zero and end with three. But three is excluding, it is not including with the three. So here you can see testing. Here my first indexing value at zero is a T. For at indexing one, E is there. For indexing two, S is here. And for indexing three, T is there. But when we print it zero colon two three, so three is 
excluded. Whatever the character at third position, it is excluded. That's why at the print we are get only T E S zero one and two only. Three is excluded. Similarly for variable one is to six. So in the one is to six, you can see here. Here I am running. So I character is available at zero indexing. So it will not coming in the printing. Space is at one. So whatever is the initial position is included, the last position is excluded. So that's why we get the statement space a m space r only. So there is a question. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, in fact, I'm on two computers. <laughs> That's okay. why it was okay. echoing. So there is a question by someone, Zeba Vishwakarma. Uh, just let, let me, because she has written to me. Okay. So no. um, just a minute. I would like to read it out. Uh, she's asking, uh, She's asking, and participants, please raise your hand. We will unmute you. So how can we give multiple inputs by uh, values by input function? This is not very clear to me. What is the question? How can we give multiple values by input function? OK. How can we give? Uh, would think, what? Yes. I think it is the first input function is there regarding that it may ask. I think this is for this input function, but I will not, uh, because here we are waiting for that, because input is the name. Here we are having the, so only one input function is there, to one variable here we declared. So at a time we can give only one value with the help of input. If you want to give n number of inputs from the user sites, so there are different techniques are there, but with the help of input function, you can give only one value at a time. Okay. I hope up till now it's clear to all. Okay. Now the another data type we can do with the Python that is a list. So list we can create, we can edit or we can update. So this list is one of the most frequently used data types used in Python. So list is declared for the syntax for the list. How I can say that my variable declare as a list variable so if you declare the variable and you are assigning the value to the variable inside the square bracket, so it will be declare your variable treat as a list variable. Here simply my underscore list equals to that is empty square bracket. So here your empty list is here. Second statement is here my underscore list with inside the square bracket one, two, three. So it will be treat as a integer list list with mixed data types that someone has asked the question. So you can declare the list with different. Here one is your integer, second is your string, and third one is your float. Just you can play it. So first list is printed with the blank, second print with your values one, two, three, and third with your mixed. No, it is not array in C. We'll come to that. List is not array. List is another data type. If you saying it's array, so the string will not be accepted. So this is simple is a list variable. Now, another example with the list, list equals to ABC. Whatever the string I put it here, I will put it in single quote. Then another one, two, three, four, float, again, string, 
and again fruit. Now I'm having another tiny list with another variables. One is integer and one is string. Now I'm added this two. So list is updated. Or you can see the list two is here, which is combination of my list plus tiny list. So list plus tiny list, it created another list with the variable list two. So when you play this, you can see that print in circular bracket list. So what will happen? First list will be printed. Now, second statement is print list minus two. So what is this? You want to print only the one element in the list, which is having the indexing at minus two. So what is that minus two indexing? If you uh, in the Python, there are two types of the indexing. One is forward indexing and second is reverse indexing. In forward indexing, your first character will be treated at the zero index. So your ABC at zero, one, two, three, four at one, two, three, and four. Likewise, this is a forward. In reverse, so your last element of the list will be treated at position minus one. So here in my list variable, 70.1, uh, 71.2, it treat at indexing at minus one, def at minus two, 2.3 at minus three, one, two, three, four at minus four, and abc at minus five. So both type of the indexing working simultaneously. There is no issue that we have to go forward or reverse at a time. You can go at any way. So print list at minus two. So print list at minus two means what? 71.2 at minus one, def at minus two. You can see it printed only def. Indexing at minus two, that value is printed. Third print statement, you can see list zero colon two, three. So first three elements are printed, zero, one, and two. ABC, one, two, three, four, and three, four. Now, you can see the another statement, the below print list two colon, means you are not put it the final value, but you put initial value, means you want to start from indexing two up to the end. So two colon, so zero, one, two. So you start from 2.34 and it will be end up to the last. So 2.34 DF and 71.2. Now print tiny list multiply by two. So tiny list is your one, two, three, X, Y, Z. It will be printed two times. Now print list plus tiny list. So all those elements are printed. Now, if you change the order here, suppose you put it here, tiny list first, and then list so statement will be, the output will be changed. So, so first year one two three x y z comes and then in uh, list elements are there. so depending on the order the output of the print statement goes to change now if you want to, to delete any entry from the list you can also do that suppose my list one is variable with ai ml program 11 and 15 it will I want to print all those list elements. Now, del. DEL is again keyword to delete the element. Now, we want to delete the element from the list one with indexing two. So at index two, whatever the element comes in my list one, so that will be deleted. So which one is coming? Zero, one, and two. So 11 should be deleted. And now after the in, deleting the value at index two, so, sorry yes ma'am uh, somebody has raised hand so yag yagmani so please unmute yourself uh, very good evening ma'am good evening, good evening. Uh, i had a doubt that uh, uh, you have in the list sir 
So you have given the values of zero is to three. How we could take 2.34 uh, that values? I couldn't get you. Zero is the first value, right? Then it should comes with ABC, right, sir? Yeah. Could it take 0 0.34, 2.34? Yes. Yeah. In the reverse order, sir. Or, uh, if, we, if it is a reverse order, then it will be minus three, right? 2.34 is minus three. So how could it uh, take, sir? So the my question is uh, print. Uh, list of zero uh, colon three. How so could it, output? Okay, uh, that is my okay. At zero colon three, if you see that the first zero indexing element is ABC to zero. Zero colon three means it will be start from zero and up to the three, but excluding three means it will printing the value zero to two, zero, one, and two. So you can see here zero indexing is yeah. ABC, one is one, two, three, four. And two is 2.34. So it will be ended at 2.34 because third will be DF. So it will not print it because zero colon three means last value is excluded. Before that, it will be print. So that's why it is ABC 1234 and 2.34. Okay. I thought the answer is 2.34. The next uh, lines are, I thought that is the line because this is the third one, right? So I thought that is the answer and how could I get it? I couldn't get you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If someone is asking at list at minus two, Python is supporting two types of indexing, forward and reverse. So forward starts from zero, one, two, three, and four likewise. Reverse, at the last element in your list or in everywhere, it will be last element of your variable will be tricked as a minus one. So whatever it may be the number of elements in your list variable, whatever it may be. Suppose if I add it here, 10, if I add it here again, 20 and 1.8. So here, what? 1.8 having the indexing at minus one. Now 20 at minus two. So when I go for the reverse indexing, the last element of your variable will be having the minus one, 20 at minus two, 10 at minus three likewise. So when we go for the minus two now, so if I updated this, so 20 will be the printing. Parent. So you can see the 20 is printed. List at minus two. Reverse indexing, 1.8 at minus one, 20 at minus two. Okay. Now we can delete the element from the list. AI ML program 11 and 15. Just I want to delete the list one at indexing two. So whatever the element at uh, index number two is there, it should be deleted. So AI at zero. ML program at first, 11 at second. If I run this, so before deleting, all the elements of the list is printed. Now, after deleting the value at index two, so what you'll get? AI MLN program at 15. 11 is deleted. If similarly, if you put it here minus two, so here it is minus one. Suppose here I will put minus one. So what should be deleted? 15 should be deleted. You can see here yeah, MLN 11 is there. So it is depending on your, which index value you want to delete. Depending on its index number, the value will be omitted. So you can see here, the list variable can be updated, added, or modified. Means we can update it, add it, or delete it. The list can be do that. Now here, here are the different list also here, A1, A2, A3. Why it is a list? Because I have put it in a square brackets. So it will treat as a list. So A1, A2, A3. Suppose it is my float. Now I am doing the printing statement. I can print all those things. Here A1 is my integer, A2 with my float value with 3.0, and this is string. I can combine this all three. There is no issue with the Python. And when we can treat with the C, C++, 
it is issued integer treat separately so treat differently and string should be treat separately now another exercise for you people we have the list of the players like this now out of this list variable abc element qq and rb the semi final of the tournament print only those how we can do it just go it here click the code and write the code for this now another variable in uh, python is tuples first one is list second one is tuples now the tuples we cannot be modified means once we declare the variable as a tuple meanwhile inside the program we cannot be modified it is called as immutable means we cannot modify those variable once it's declared that's its final we cannot edit it just like in the list we are added the list that is list one list two combine it we deleted the one element of the list likewise but tuples are strict what are the things you are declare when you are declaring as a tuple that's as it is you cannot be modified it if you want to use any one of them you can do it but you cannot be modify the tuple so because when you are doing the programming somewhere you require it not be it should not be changed so declare those variable as a tuple so how we can declare the tuple in circular bracket what are the things you are declaring it will be treated as a tuple so tuple 1 print tuple 1 like this now i want to access the indexing at two so it will be program i am directly get the tuple 1 at indexing to as a program any practical exam uh, when you are handling with uh, suppose uh, some machine learning variables or some features are there in the deep learning you don't want to modify those features once you uh, train your network and those network features should be a fix it should not be modified during your uh, adding some new networks or some biasing uh, some bias with the uh, network it should not be modified so declare those features as a tuple so now we are going to declare the numpy library now first time we are declaring the library or we are invoking the library in the python program up till now just we are writing the statement and executing those statements so we are not return or we are not write any library so python supports n different types of the libraries so out of this first is numpy it is a numerical python library numpy is and it is very powerful when you are working with the numbers definitely you require the numpy library so for most much more informations you can go with the numpy.org and you will get n number of informations are here so first statement is here import numpy as np so what it is there import means we are accessing the library which library numpy as a np means we are creating the alias for this means every time there is no need to type a numpy when you type as np means it will be calling to the numpy so import numpy means we are accessing the numpy as a np means we have created the alias for numpy as a np you can create different alias also there but standard or the most of the people are using np now here we are going for the array declaration so here my b1 is a variable np dot array means i am using the numpy library out of this library i am using the array package np dot array means from the numpy library we are accessing the array now what is that array in circular bracket in first square bracket i am typing 1 2 3 5 so this is my first row element now second variable np dot array that is b2 with another row elements so it is in square bracket starting with the square bracket and ending with the square bracket so it is my 
first row. If we want to go for the second row, you can put the comma and inside the square bracket, you can go with the another variable. So this is your two dimensional array now. So first we'll see with this. So here my B1, B2, all are my one dimensional array. Now I want to print B1 plus B2, print B2 three times. Now print number of dimensions B1 dot ending. So there are different uh, <coughs> variables I'm using here or different functionality I'm using here. B1 dot ending, B1 dot shape and B1 dot size. So all are giving you the different results. So B1 dot ending will give the number of rows in arrays. B1 dot shape will give the shape of your array. And B1 dot size gives the number of elements in your rows and columns. Now B1 dot D type means it will provide your data type. Now all of the functions we are doing with the B1. Just run it and see the values. So printing first, that is print B1 plus B2, addition of these two variables, you'll get it here. Now B2 multiplied by three means what you are getting here. Here, each elements of the B2 is multiplied by three. It is not here. That is printing the three times the B2. When declare B2 as array, it will multiply each element of the array by three. If you see initial statement in the string, we are using hello x tree and print that variable three multiplied by four times. So it display hello four times. Syntax is similar, b2 multiply by three. But here b2 is your array. So here what is happening? If you declare it as array, so multiply by three, what is happening? This three is multiplied with the array element. The number of dimension ending. So number of rows in array, one row. Shape of array, five comma, means it is one. Size of array, how many elements? Five elements are here. Array stores element data type, integer 64. If I put it here, 2.0 support. Now my array is of type float. Just running it, see the last statement. It is goes to float 64. Automatically, the data types goes to change. What type of the elements you are having? If a single element is a float, so all your data types will be treated, all the elements will be treated as a float. If all the elements of your array is integer, then it will be treated as integer, otherwise not. Now, suppose I want to declare this as a two dimensional array, put it the element. 11, 22, 33. Now, see this. When it is having the one dimensional, what are the parameters? What are the values you are getting with b1 dot ending, b1 dot shape, and b1 dot size? Like this. Now, when you declare it's as a two dimensional, means you are having two rows. Here, this is the first row. Inside the square bracket, what are the elements you are having? You can put it as the first row, comma, means your first row is over. Inside the square bracket, in the same size of the element should be put it here. Then this is second row element. Okay. So, you have to put it, the starting with the square bracket here. And then the Now see here, number of dimension is two, shape of the array is two comma five, size of the array is 10. Clear with this? So here we can addition of the arrays, multiply with the arrays. Now again, Another more operations on the array. Again, we have to import the numpy np dot arrange. So array is uh, when you declare np with you, and what are the 
those elements inside the your matrix so array is nothing but your matrices elements are there now np dot arrange is will be a how many elements you are having suppose np dot arrange this is another function or another a package in the numpy that is np dot arrange again we want to import the numpy we are accessing np dot arrange so zero means we have to start with the zero ended with 40 and the increment of the sequence in the range of five but when we want to use the arrange so 40 is excluded function is same if we are using the line space started with the zero 5 is the final value and 15 means 0 to 5 how many values you are you are required between the 0 and 5 you need a 15 values so this 0 to 5 this will be divided with the 15 values just run it the ideas will be more clear see here np dot arrange we are printing this a sequential array with the step of 5 the first value is printed with 0 second incremented by 5 then 10 15 20 25 30 and 35 and next is a 40 but 40 is your limit so 40 will not be printed if here if you put it here as a 41 now 40 will be printed with the 5 increment i hope you clear sometimes this last value is excluded somewhere in python and somewhere last is included so depending on the functions it will be decided uh, there is a question by manoranjan kumarji how to know what options are available within within mpy uh, numpy and how they might be used uh, that is uh, array and arrange i am right now using it array is declared to the array that is matrices an array it means we want to create the values. We want to create the array of values. Means you want to create the array, you can use the arrange. And if you are having the elements of the matrices, you can use the array. When and where to use array and arrange. I think your question is that when to use np.array and when to use arrange. So arrange means you don't have the array element with you. You want to create the array by providing the initial range, final range, and the incremental value. You can use the arrange there. And whenever you are having the array element with you, you can use those np.array. Yes, when we want to declare the np uh, array, we need it because we are accessing the package of the number. That's why np.array. Suppose if I comment it, the statement, I will not inputting numpy as a np dot a numpy as a np, so you will get the error. Np is not defined. Okay, here I will not get the error because somewhere up above already I imported the numpy, so it's having it with the database. So when you're creating the new Google Colab file and and it's starting with the first time, so definitely you will get the error. Here I will not get the error because google collab already having i'm running with the google collab so already it has invoked the numpy library that's why we are not getting the error here so uh, np dot arrange we started with the zero final value is 40 but excluding the 40 the increment with the five So that's why the 40 is not here. Now in the line space, 0, 15, and how many values we need? 15. So if you can see here, started with the zero. Now if instead of the 15, if I put it here, suppose I will put it here as a five. So the things will be more clear. So you'll get only zero to five. Five values should be, you will get it. So starting with the zero, 1.25, 2.5, 3.75, 5. That is the last. So within the range 0 to 5, how many values you need? 5. So all the equally spaced value, you will get it with the line space. 
within the 0 to 5 range how many values you needed that will be getted with this and 0 to 40 that is arrange it will be incremental here now np dot array one two four five eight seven now here i have purposefully defined the data type should be a flow because here my numbers are integer if i will not put the data type as a flow by default it will take as a integer if i put it as a float so put it uh, all this all this value of uh, array a will be treated as a float values now np dot zero means it will be create the zero matrix of a size three by four np dot full it will be create three by three matrix of each of the element with the value six and data type is a complex now np dot random seed comma two it will be going for creating the any random value then np dot random r a n d n two comma two just you can see here spelling differences here but this both will give the different values just fun for you find the difference between d and d it is very easy just google it you will get the answer now here np dot array you can see it here when you want to print all those elements first a element you can see here 1.02.4 like this it will put the decimal point because we put our a as a data type as a float that's why they put a decimal point if you put data type as integer Run the cell again, and this cell you will get one, two, four, five, eight, seven. So, depending on the data types, you are getting the different. Now, np dot zeros it will create three comma four. So, it will be create three by four matrix with the, all the elements of the matrices is a zero. That is null matrix. Third one is np dot full three comma three and that is a six means matrix size is three by three each of the element of the value with the six and data type is complex so six plus i zero comma j that is the complex value now np dot random seed comma two it's not printed here so when you put suppose this is equals to f If you see the random seed F value, means what? This seed value indicates the two, means what? Whenever you are, suppose everyone has to uh, check their hypothesis with the random values, but every time people are running with the random number. So we cannot fix that the number is random. So always that number is random, but we need the same results. So that's why the number is random. But when we go with the seed comma two, means the random number with the seed two. So everyone should get the same value whenever they run the program with the random number. If you change the seed number, still all of you are getting the same number values there. That is random dot seed. That seed is means that it is a random number but it throughout the people or the, all the people's the random seed will get the same results. Otherwise, what will happen? You are going with the random number. 
someone is running with the value one, someone with the 1.5, someone with the 0.5, someone with the 0.4. So all will get the different results. So when you are working with the random number, but random number should be the same. So that is with, how we can achieve with the help of dot C. Now, just simple add function, you can add the complex number. That's not a difficult. Simple plus operator, you can use it. Two complex numbers, you can add it, no issue. I think you can perform this because still we are at the 720s there. Similarly, all the operations you can do with this. Similar array reshaping is there. This is very important when we are working with the uh, CNN or deep learning network. Here I'm having the NP dot array means we have created the array of a size three by four. Now here I reshape this array with three comma two comma two. This three indicates the number of matrices I want to create from this array. Then this two comma two is a each matrices size. Means what? My A with the number of elements, three comma four means 12 elements are there. I'm reshaping this array with three comma two comma two means three matrices are there with each of the size is two by two. Again, the 12 elements are there, three into two, six, six into two, 12. You can run this cell. So my original array A is here, one, two, three, four, like this. Now new underscore A reshaped. So what it is, I, might, I should get a three matrices and each matrices of a size is two by two. So you can say there's reshape array, three matrices are there and each of size is two by two. The elements are same, one, two, three, four. This is a first matrices, second and third. If you are not put the proper values of here with the uh, reshaping array, means you are accessing a dot reshape, means which matrices you want to reshape a. And if here you miss the value, suppose three comma three, if I put it, so three, three is a nine, nine two is 80, you will get the error. That is size is mismatch. So you should have the proper number. Now, np dot array, that is my b array with one, two, three, four, five, six, b dot flatten means all this my array element of the b should be flattened because uh, in CNN or deep learning network, the last layer should be flattened means all the elements we should be having in a single row like this. So whatever is your b array is one, two, three, four, five, six. It is two by three matrix is there. But when you use the flatten, it will put all those elements in a single row. Means what? First, it will put one, two, three, then second row, third row, fourth row, likewise. It will be put it in a single row with the B dot flatten. Here, the array addition is there. My A, B, C is here. So A plus B, it will be adding it. Now you can see it here. My A of size array is different and the size of B is different still it is added what will happen it will put with the higher order of the array and it will be added here my a the size of array is three by three and b is one by three so what will happen we know that to add the matrices we should be required the size sizes matter size should be the same but in that in python there is no need two by two or two comma two comma two is added with each an element Similarly, A into B is there. Each and every element is multiplied of B with A. So there is a mismatch, uh, that array mismatch size error will not get it with the array in Python. Similarly, in C, C++, we can declare the functions also. What is the syntax to define the function? So here, the keyword, you have to require def that is define the function, then name of the function, and what are the arguments you need to pass. That is the syntax, and again is the colon. So colon indicates the function definition is clear. Now what are the things we want to put inside the function statements, which are the statement should be executed when this function is called. 
again this function statement should be intended and then the return so return indicates the end of the function it is simple function is created df print string means i want to define my own print function with the single value by passing the value str that is a colon end of the function definition then function statements are print str return i am using the keyword as a print str whatever the string is here it will pass us to this in the return is so whenever i call this print str it will act as a print function so i am using it here print str calling the user defined function so this value will go to the string then print str so it will print it like this so here you can print your statement so this print str is your user defined print function in this way you can create your own function also just a simple exercise write a function for adding four numbers so up till now we have seen two variable declaration that is a list and tuple third one is dictionary so i will go little bit fast that is in the dictionary you are having the class and the member associated with the that class so how we can know that is which element of which we are declaring the which type of the variable either list tuple or dictionary so it is depending on the bracket you are using if you want to declare you want to declare variable as a list use square bracket you want to use tuples use circular bracket you want to use dictionary you can use uh, curly braces so here my dictionary dict equals to that is curly braces i am using it here so i am declaring this dict as a dictionary variable this is a class of my dictionary that is a name associated it is area age and class you can put it order may be same or may not be the same that is not the issue with the dictionary variable so that class is associated with that variable only you cannot associate age with the name so age with the numbers like that so in the dictionary you will get that flexibility that the respective class with the respective member so that member will not be suppose you are defining name name with the array and class with the array again it will use the error because array is already associated with the name so here you can take a precaution or it will gives the uh, intimation to you that is same member cannot be come to the two different class now after the numpy library we are going with the matplotlib in that we have to plot we have to plot a plot of the some numbers so for that we have to use matplotlib so how we can access from matplotlib so matplotlib is a one of the libraries there so we are not input all those library from those library we are inputting only pyplot so from matplotlib i am interested in only pyplot so import pyplot as a plt so we are creating alias for pyplot as a plt so from matplotlib we are extracting only the pyplot again here we are creating the two lists years america gdp and china gdp with some numbers now we are using plt so plt means we are accessing the pyplot dot plot so pyplot can the jo plot function defined kiya we are passing those variable so passing the arguments it is years america gdp america gdp with blue color marker as asterisk line style is solid another plot years china gdp color is red marking with each point as o line style is solid i have created here x label as year plot dot show just run it you will get the plot here you can get the x label similarly you can go for the y label that is gdp here you can see that color is blue so blue color indicates america gdp and red color will give the china gdp here you can see that o 
for the that is of each point in the plot elastic so similar point any doubt up till now uh professor vikas yes so now that the time uh, is already over uh, i was wondering if uh, like uh, so this this part is complete now you will have to switch over to uh, keras and tensorflow uh, participants because this is the weekend and uh, they are also they might be exhausted from 3:30 onwards they have been uh into study so my suggestion was that we can cover it when we are doing uh the rest part of it tensor flow mm -hmm. and keras you have made excellent uh, google collab notebook i request the participants to go through this part themselves in case it is needed we will be covering this in our later session uh, will that be okay because i don't think it can be covered in 10 uh, 15 minutes so and you must all be exhausted so please let us know if you can go through this part yourself and or we can call some day uh, vikas ji once again or my students will be able to help you with that when they take up the sessions will that be okay uh, yes. yeah they are saying yes in fact Yeah, they're saying yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you so very much. So, uh, what do you say, uh, Professor Vikas? I think uh, they, uh, for the sake of participants only, I'm saying that they are they must be exhausted now. And if we continue, I think it will take another half an hour at least. Yeah, yeah. So. so Already Google Colab is self-explanatory. I made it like this. Just they have yeah, to. Yeah, you have made so wonderful. I'm. Um, I was watching your web, like Google, this, and I found that we need to have two more things. The time is less definitely, but you have mm -hmm. explained so well. I must thank you on behalf of the entire Asia Connect uh, project team, on behalf of my co-coordinator, Professor Preeti Khanna. and myself and on behalf of triple it dm jabalpur we sincerely thank you for your such a wonderful contribution and we hope to have your support in future as well yeah sure so, and participants you have got a wonderful uh, this is one of the most um, important uh, google collab that you can use as a reference book whenever we will be doing something or the other we will be making use of any of these functions libraries list and this can become your reference book for tensorflow and keras uh, i suggest you I mean, like a take home exercise and he has also given some exercises i request you to please go through those exercises and try solving it yourself we will be there to help you and support you and assist you and i agree with uh, uh, pran pranj pran i don't know uh, if i'm pranj pranija madam that this was such a wonderful session thank you so very much thank you thank you thank you thank you so very much nice meeting you online after a long time thank you so participants uh, wish you all a happy weekend uh, please enjoy your uh, dinner with your family and friends and then we will be meeting 